Many years I was like, I want to get to this level and I'll be happy. In the final couple of years there, I really did hit all my targets. It was going really well. I was like, wow, this is amazing. And I had the money and the disposable income it's coming black, in. Where black, I was, black, felt like I started buying some nice things. Yeah, and, then, yeah, and, yeah. and what amazed me on a personal level, I thought I so long, so that's what I wanted. wanted. And when I got to that point, I was bored so quickly. <laughs> Do you think that's like, like oh, is a view of what happiness should be? Should For reasons of in which the way in which our society is structured. Yeah, um, yeah there is a level of programming through all of the messaging that we receive that is structured in that way to define success as something that has a material aspect yes. to it or a financial yeah. aspect to it yeah. because that is necessary to mm -hmm. continue the society in which we live in which is about consuming it's about buying things it is about is in things and it is about is it placing those things those or they actually need to be placed Is wide open, mine's ready to explore, let's dive right in. Today's guest, we've got Glenn Thomason, uh, host of The Reality Check on Revolution Radio and also a, a director of GLAD Insurance Solutions Limited, general insurance brokers. Pleasure to have you on today, Glenn. Pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for uh, taking time out of your busy diary to, to be with us. For everyone listening now, can you tell me a little bit about your background and how you got into the insurance industry. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, everybody who works in the insurance industry has got a story because yeah. um, nobody ever wakes up and goes, I'm going to become an insurance <laughs> broker or, a, you know, or an insurance underwriter. Um, it always just kind of happens to you. Yeah. So for me, I kind of, from a young age, I've always been interested in IT and tech. And I was yeah. basically building computers when I was about 13 yeah. for people at my dad's work oh, wow. to make a few quid, like yeah, proper yeah, side yeah. hustle and all that. Yeah. Um, and I really wanted to work in, in IT. Um, and yeah. I ended up going to to and it's back sort of about 19 um kind of didn't do great left my a levels went to college but just spent the whole time looking for a job and then left there or was <laughs> invited to leave from her <laughs> um, to leave. yeah and then um <laughs> Yeah. And then, so yeah, so I went to this like business college and they, they, they said, oh, we've got like various NVQs in different industries. Yeah. So I thought, right, I'll do that. Look at something in IT. And they came back and said, oh no, we don't have anything in IT, but we've got something in insurance. <laughs> don't brokers. have anything so, in IT. Yeah. At the time, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> Maybe they just, yeah, we're only working for this one insurance company and they were just getting, but whatever. So yeah, I ended up getting, um, ended up with a, like a, an apprenticeship basically in an insurance broker. So I didn't know anything about insurance, okay. but it was like, um, they were like a nice small little brokerage down in Milton Keynes um, yeah. and worked there for a couple of years really. And I, I had the MVQ, it was just an MVQ in customer service and they came in and checked. And they I just, fudged that, it that. into insurance. Yeah, yeah, because well, you can apply it to anything, any customer <laughs> facing role, you know. So yeah, did that. That was dealt with in about six months and then just yeah. kind of learning the ropes. I was doing personal lines insurance then. So it was kind of yeah. doing all of the home and motor, but it was like connected to the business. So a lot of the directors had commercial clients and if they wanted their their home or the wife's car or something like that yeah, doing yeah, it'd yeah. be you know so we could we kind of i did i did that for a bit um and then that kind of got me into the industry so yeah it just kind of happens to you it's yeah, like yeah. <laughs> i'm surprised it doesn't because it you know it's a great industry it's like you know like mortgages like any of these financial yeah, services yeah. they're great industries to work in yeah they're really like you learn a lot of you learn a lot about yourself and about the industry about people really and yep. what they want and mm -hmm. you you know you're help, helping skills. people yeah yeah and it's they're really good, and I'm surprised it's not more, you know, the careers fairs and the career side of things. We we as industries, I think, uh, and and the insurance industry should bear mm. some responsibility for this. We we need to be better, really, at getting into you know yeah. schools and career fairs and things like that. that yeah. you maybe know. even develop a, an insurance qualification. To instead yeah, of, yeah, just there is some stuff like the Chartered Insurance Institute where you yeah. do the mm -hmm. qualifications. You know, they have a young CII mm -hmm. for for youngsters and, and young people in insurance, but they're just. I think it's a, a problem in the industry that we're recognising and talking about in that like everybody's looking of a certain age and a certain type, you know, and you're like, well, in 20 minutes, in 20 years time, you know, will there be anybody doing this? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. everybody, you know, yeah. we haven't got a load of young people coming into it uh, as much as we'd like to see, I think. And, is, it, and it keeps it fresh is, as well, doesn't it? I guess it's, I guess as well, kids are thinking it's probably not as sexy, is it? Is to is be, it yeah. No, I mean, it's, <laughs> you know, I used, to, I used to tell, when I was out, I used to tell people I was a fireman, like just if I was out in a club or something, I used to, <laughs> <laughs> you can't say I sell insurance, yeah, you know, or, or I couldn't then when I wasn't, you know, confident and happy in myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is, this is it though, isn't it? I guess, um, you know, now you speak to a lot of kids and it's like I want to be a YouTuber or, mm. you know, I want to go and go into space or something like. That. It's, yeah, it's yeah. like, I mean, it's the same with mortgages. I never thought, yeah, 
that's what I'd love to do. You know, yeah. it's just, it, it, it just happens, doesn't it? But yeah, um, no, it's, it's super interesting. So on top of setting up Glad, mm. you... So, all, so that, yeah, that kind of came much later, actually, in, yeah, in the yeah, process. Yeah. So I'd worked, employed for many years, um, yeah, various yeah. brokers, and I kind of... Um, how did that? How did you get to Glad? Because it's a really interesting story, isn't it, of how it got set up? Yeah, so, yeah, it's... I'd I'd worked for many years of kind of it was quite funny really because I'd kind of worked in a broker's where I started as a um like an account handler working with one of the directors and kind of learning the ropes in yeah. commercial and that yeah. was kind of just over 10 years ago now um and great company uh, small growing business so it was kind of it was a real eye-opener for me because I'd only ever worked in larger organizations where you have like um you know you've got a whole operations department you've got you know accounting and all that side yeah. of things and it you don't get the exposure to how a business runs. You only know about your yeah. little bit, don't you? You know, yeah. you're an accountant, you work on these clients. Your process. You're very much, yeah. Yeah, yeah, pigeonholed in a way. And working for that smaller company and being sort of entrusted to deal with some higher level stuff because there wasn't an operations director to, yeah. you know, when I was in a larger company, it'd be like the insurers would come in um, and they would meet with some senior people and they would have a chat about what type of, business they're looking for what type of clients they're wanting to get onto their books yeah and then they'd go out to lunch and have a few beers yeah and then if we were lucky as account handlers and they could be bothered to send an email we might find out what that meeting was about <laughs> yeah. i always think actually the insurers are the suppliers yeah like anything they're better off actually talking to the people who are who are sitting in front of a client not someone yeah. who's running the business and managing the staff yep uh, but Agreed, that's just yeah. the way it works in those large organizations so what was really good was I had a good few years where I was able to be involved in those meetings where yeah. the ND was kind of like, no, you guys are the ones, you're the sales execs with the targets, you take the meeting, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so every time Aviva came in or Zurich yeah. or Allianz, you know, I was having a meeting with them and going yeah, to lunch. Yeah. And, yeah. and also other aspects of the business in terms of I had access to all of the reports and how they make the money and how it's structured and, and yep. what everything costs really to run a business. Mm -hmm. And I described that as... It, it demystified it for me it was like oh okay because you kind of have this idea about well god to run a business you need to be a certain type of person you've got to really yeah, yeah. know your stuff you got to and 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 you do to some extent but but it, a lot of it we don't know what we don't know and it's kind 100%. of once that becomes mm -hmm. demystified mm -hmm. you're like oh, i i could do that actually so i, I took, <laughs> sort of took a step back and said well well what am i getting from them and obviously as an employer, I was, although I was a targeted sales exec, I had a basic salary. So even if yeah. I didn't close any deals that month, still got paid, <laughs> still had my car allowance. You know, I had that. that had still a kept a roof over your head yeah, every month. I had that security. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and it's quite funny, really, because for many years, I was like, I want to get to this level and I'll be happy. I'll get yeah. this many clients. I'll get this salary. I'll get to here and I'll, um, you know, once I'm really making. And then in the final couple of years there, I really did hit all my targets. It was going really well. I was like, wow, this is amazing. And what's the, and, and I had the money and the disposable income coming Flash in. Where I was, felt like I started buying some time. nice things. Yeah, and, then, yeah. and, and what amazed me on a personal level is actually I thought for so long that that's what I wanted. And when I got to that point, I was so I was bored so quickly. <laughs> yeah. Like I literally was like, okay, yeah. I've done that now. I've done There's that. No so meaning what, in yeah, it. Yeah, what's next? So then I like made life difficult for myself by <laughs> removing myself from employment, getting rid of all of that security and money and stuff, and really sweating a bit about, wow, how are we going to pay the bills this month? <laughs> but you know, what? I always kind of then fl flip that around and say, but I had I also hadn't realized quite how unhappy I was actually in that environment, not having yeah. that control, yeah. not being able to make my own decisions on things, mm -hmm. having to live with things because you're like, well, it's their company. So yeah, yeah, that's you know, how I they want to do it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think we could do this better and we'd make more money for you, the owner. Yeah. And yeah. they're like, nah, I'm not, I'm not spending <laughs> money to make money. I'm not. <laughs> it's you know. so mad, isn't it, it is. to think of people saying. Oh, this will make more money. Like, yeah. Clearly, it will make more money. But you might have to spend a few quid. Yeah, but on. nah, that's yeah. just a that's a not a growth mindset, is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And that that's it. And you know what? When they're sitting there and they're like, and and insurance is a funny business because it's annually renewable. It's not like a lot of other businesses in that yeah. respect. And it's yeah. kind of so you can get to a point where if you've got enough clients, if you don't upset anybody, you have to add a little bit on each year because you're naturally going to lose clients through yeah. mergers and acquisitions mm -hmm. and, and and insolvency. But mm -hmm. in the main if you're doing a good job and you're keeping your clients happy, Ticks they're not going to go through the hassle of going to another broker. No. If, they, if they trust you and they're comfortable that you know what their needs are and those needs are being met, then then it's, you know, they'll stay with you. Whereas a lot of other businesses, you know, it's constantly getting new, isn't it? It's like, I know in your industry, <laughs> yeah. you know, you get a mortgage, you're recommending a five-year fix to somebody. Yeah, absolutely. If, it, if it's right, yeah. yeah, yeah. If it's right for them, yeah. it's right for them. <laughs> yeah. You need to go and find a new client and come back to them in three, four, this, five years. 
absolutely 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 that's the thing you're always kind of um you know that that repeat journey mm. is is um certainly in current interest rates it's it's elongated out more and more yeah yeah definitely so yeah. so yeah you're right you're constantly yeah. having to to find new clients Whereas, to, yeah. yeah so we're kind of like in the insurance industry it's like once you get up to a size and you've got a good book and it's paying yeah. every year you can yeah. earn the same money next year without having to put too many new clients on because you're sure. just, yeah. just repeating the process you know it's, so it's like it's almost it's similar isn't it to you know people that are in financial advice pensions and investments mm, it's a long term yeah, yeah. taking the ongoing fees I know it's different with the insurance it's commission but it's the same thing isn't yeah, it you, you know yeah. you know when you start the year first of Jan you're going to get paid X as yeah. Yeah. of course things can drop off and, yeah. and things like that but but you pretty much know where you are right yeah yeah definitely so I always kind of bring it back around and say although I've got rid of all of that stuff and I'm now running my own business and I'm you know and I've got to kind of yeah put the hours in and really you know you don't work <laughs> you don't eat type thing isn't yeah. it but it's um but I'm so but what I'm really surprised at is I'm so much happier yeah in myself yeah. and I realize now that I wasn't that happy before even though i I, I didn't really realize it at the time because I didn't know what it could be like. Do you so. think that's like society's view of what happiness should be mm. or what success is? Yeah, definitely what success is. I mean, I'm quite, yeah. it's something that I'm quite passionate about really in terms of, I think that for reasons of in which the way in which our society is structured, yeah. um, there is a level of programming to us <laughs> through media and through everything, yeah. through all of the messaging mm -hmm. that we receive. Um, that is structured in that way to define success as something that has a material aspect yes. to it or a financial yeah. aspect to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because that is necessary to mm -hmm. continue the society in which we live in, which is about consuming. It is about buying things. It is about having things. And it is about more and more so replacing those things before they yeah. actually need to be replaced. <laughs> yes, it's, um, yeah. Just to have the latest shiny thing, you know, the, the, <laughs> the, the magpies iPhone. of the world <laughs> yeah. that's got the latest phone and got the, yeah. you know, yeah. um, and, it, and it's that kind of thing rather than waiting until yours is um, mm. being... What do they call it? Like they thought they sl your phone starts slowing down if you wait for too long, it's, and that's it's built in as well. Called um, planned obsolescence. That's it, obsolescence. Yeah, yeah. And they do it in everything, yeah. don't they? It's in yeah, cars yeah, yeah. and in everything. But yeah, I think I think there is a big focus on what does success look like, and you've only got to think about what you see on LinkedIn or yeah. Instagram and all this, and none of it's real anyway. In many <laughs> cases, you know, it's filters and it's people fake it till you make it mentality. And, yeah, like, and yeah. I've been there. I've been that guy. You know, I'm not. I'm not. I, I'm just as susceptible to the programming as everyone else. But I think having stepped back from that, um, mm. it's quite interesting actually, yeah, because going on that journey and getting to that point, even when I chose to leave and start my own business, yeah. I didn't realize in that moment, I was like, yeah, because I'll, the reason, my main reason for doing it was like I could see the ceiling in the yeah. small company I was working for. I was like, yeah. okay, I could stay here for uh, X amount of years and get these pay rises yeah, each yeah. year, but I will get to a point where <laughs> I'm not the owner of the business and yeah. I can get to a financial point where I will hit a ceiling and yeah, I yeah. can only then go to another company or Without or the whatever. flexibility and With freedom. Yeah, and so yeah. I was like, well, if I start my own business, there's yeah. no limit. I'm not getting paid a percentage of every deal. I'm getting paid everything on every yeah, deal. Yeah, you yeah. Know? So um, really went into it with a money mindset. Mm -hmm. And I'm sort of three years in now. Yeah, um, yeah. It hasn't grown as quickly as I thought. Yeah. But actually part of it's that... It's always the way, though. It's always the way. But I think <laughs> as well, part of that is because on that journey, I kind of found myself and what was important to me. Yeah. And I, and I, I realized that actually having then gone without the money and some yeah, of those yeah. things... I was like, I don't actually, that stuff, I'm not actually that interested in, mm -hmm. in, in having the latest phone or, or the latest so, this or the latest that. So what is important to you? Having freedom and flexibility to be myself. Mm. So I think in the last three years, I've found out a bit more about who I am. And yeah. it's allowed me to do things that I never thought that I would do, like running a radio show, which we'll talk about. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like hosting yeah. networking events. And I just wasn't that guy, I don't think. Mm -hmm. I was, but I hadn't hadn't unlocked that because yeah, yeah. I was on a journey chasing something, success, financial yeah. success, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. actually wasn't what I wanted. But I almost had to stop and step back and say, well, what do you actually want? What really annoys you? And it's, well, yeah, yeah. working for somebody else, being responsible <laughs> to them. <laughs> yeah. And, that you know, and I, I ca yeah, I kind of, I started the journey going, well, if it doesn't work, I can go back to into employment. But I'm now realizing, actually, that the more years I'm my own boss, that I'm not sure how employable, <laughs> you, you know, you'll be able to relate yeah, to this as well. You completely. know, it's like, I don't yeah, know yeah. if I can deal with that. Unemployable. Yeah. Someone telling yeah. you what to do and stuff. Because yeah. it's so empowering. And I'd encourage as many people as possible to to, to just try yeah. it if you can, you know, find something you're really passionate about. And, yeah. or, or, or start with the thing that you're already... Um, 
trained and comfortable yeah. doing and and then just get out there and give it a go because the worst that can happen is it doesn't work and you go and you go and get a Abs- job absolutely but like you'll find you s- yourself i think in the process this I is it and, and like you said you know start with something that you can do and and it and then it inevitably can branch out like it has mm. done for you i mean you know you've got um the reality check show Revolu- uh, revolution radio yeah. in northampton um co-hosts of that program i mean how how did you get into that? Because that's so it different is really left from, field from insurance. Isn't it? Yeah, it's got nothing to do with it. It's not even At about all. business, which yeah. I quite like actually in a way yeah. as well. Because yeah. you don't want to just be you know just doing the same thing ev- sure. everywhere. But sure. um, yeah, I kind of fell into that. It was a weird sort of thing. I. I met somebody well at business networking while we were in lockdown actually. So it was all virtual. Okay, yeah. It was yeah. one of these virtual networking meetings where you could like jump from one table to the other. Yeah. So you could see a t- this person over there and be, oh, I need to speak to an accountant. I'll go over there. Yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. Like like you would in a networking room, but just virtually. Yeah. Um, and I was in something like that, and I met this guy Nigel Booth, who is a change management consultant. You met N- Nigel in the yeah in the networking meeting. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah, yeah. And I didn't. I it wasn't that I met him. He kind of. I was. I was on a table. Chat to people so you've got like your four um window four people on a table saying yeah, it's yeah, got yeah. four little boxes virtual and everything and i was chatting on a table and he joined the table and when someone joins you just wave and then carry on your conversation yeah and he just sat there quietly waiting for the conversation to come to a natural sort of pause but he'd been watching me interacting with these people yeah and then he called me afterwards and was like and and bear in mind i don't know this guy like i just met just him out ran- the Nigel, random, random you know, phone just call. popped up on the table sort of thing and he'd got my details and phoned me afterwards and said um and he said something really odd to me. He said, I don't I don't know if you know this. He's like, but you've got an energy about you. And I, he's yeah. like, and I don't think you know. It sounds he's like, like something Nigel would say. It, yeah, now yeah. that you know, you now know Nigel. Him, yeah. Now I know him very well. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. I get it. But he's it, amazing like that. But it, what but a guy. I'd yeah. never had somebody kind of, I'd, even if you thought something like that, having the confidence to ring somebody yeah. and say that to somebody, I yeah. was kind of, whoa, okay, <laughs> yeah. whoa, who's this guy? This guy's interesting. <laughs> you know? And then he was like, right, we should grab a one to one. But he was like, but you know, rather than go for a coffee like everybody does, he's like, come for a walk. Uh, he just got a new um, puppy, like Alsatian, like literally oh, nice. that week. Yeah, yeah. Um, Sage, who we mention regularly on the show, and she's now like three years old. Wow. Is it wow. two, three years old? And, um, yeah, basically it went up to uh, meet him and went for a walk in the field and just chatted for a couple of hours. And it was like a really quite an inspirational one-to-one. And he's quite an inspirational bloke because he's he he's a change very, management consultant, very, but he's also he, the reality coach, as he calls himself. And it's he, he's, he helps people basically unlock themselves and find. Yeah. So I kind of then worked with him um, over that to really kind of get because i think i was already had these feelings of like oh this is things are changing and yeah and i'd gone like anybody with business it's never plain sailing you know <laughs> no. I, i'd say i started a business three years ago but actually i'm on my second business already yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which we can get into but it's um so i, I i'm happy with that as well because a lot of these success stories you know whenever you read these people that have made it yeah. they sort of go oh yeah no I'm, i've had multiple failures failure failure and then you well, so the fact it, that i'm already on my second it. business means i've got to be doing something right <laughs> yeah <that's laughs> you know? on the right path. yeah on the right path because yeah, yeah. i've had a failure already <laughs> um but yeah but nothing you know i'm joking nothing's a failure you learn you learn from it i take a lot of lessons yeah, yeah. away from that it's Absolutely. easy to look back on those things yeah. and go oh, if i'd have done that differently if i'd have known then what i know now yeah, and yeah. but all we can do is, is learn from that um, this is it and that's the key isn't it learning from the the failures the mistakes mm, definitely and 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 using that language as well you know all too often these days you know people shy away from that kind of failure the language oh yeah it's actually really people. empowering it's yeah. like you learn something if, yeah. if nothing went wrong you didn't learn anything you just maybe got lucky or maybe you followed a process this so. is it i think it's the woke nonsense isn't it where people kind of are afraid of offending and actually you hit the nail on the head it's it's empowering to go, okay yeah i failed yeah and this is why and this is what i've learned and that's only going to help you in business in life in whatever you choose to do definitely i mean Hey guys, I just want to take 30 seconds out of our video today to talk to you about today's sponsor. Our sponsor is QB Rooms. They've produced this video for us today. So if you're in need of a podcast, content creation, or music videos, or in fact videos for anything, you need to get in touch with QB Rooms. The link is down below now. If you click on the link, it will take you to QB Rooms website. You know, you, you've, got, you've got your radio show you've got your insurance brokerage mm. how, do you, how do you balance your time like i mean 
and business buzz. I mean, you're hosting business yeah. buzz as well. Not forgetting that. I mean, how would you separate your time out? I think a lot of it. <laughs> I think actually some of those things don't take up a huge amount of time. They just look like they do because they're the more <laughs> okay. like I think it's once you get a process and a routine, it becomes quite a quick thing, really. Yeah. And I've got help. I've got people around me that can help me with good it team. as well. A good yeah. team. Yeah. So like um, so to take the radio, for example, and actually I've, I didn't fully finish your question. Your point, oh, God, sorry. Um, yeah, go, go. About how I got onto the radio I just went <laughs> off on a bit of a tangent. So I'll, br I'll bring it back. So I met Nigel. <laughs> And then uh, Nigel, I don't know how Nigel got into it, but he was he had been for a couple of weeks running this radio show. He was already there. He was already there. He'd met Chris at Revolution Radio. He'd got this show going with someone else who was doing the tech bit for him so he could just talk into the mic because he doesn't yeah. do technology, really. No, uh, no, he's a bit no. older than me, Nigel. Um, so, yeah, he's... he's you know, Looked we, like we've two grown up in a bit, pop, we? yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Two bald blokes with a radio show or something. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, so I'd gone along. He was like, you should come on the show as a guest and share your story about yeah. how you've kind of left employment and started this business so really and all of that sort of stuff. So I was a guest on the show. And then he was like, that's great. Come back next week and carry on the story. So I came back the second week and we did that. And then I just kept coming back, really. <laughs> yeah, and then it just kind of developed into there were three of us then. Um, and then something changed with the show and the girl that we were doing it with, she um, couldn't, logistically, she couldn't make it anymore. Yeah, so yeah, it yeah. just became the two of us. And we kind of then took it forward from there. Um and yeah, it all happened very naturally, but it was quite weird because it wasn't, I'd never done anything like that before. I'd never been in front yeah. of a microphone. I'd never, it was, if, it was one of those things I always joke said, if somebody had said to me a few years ago, you know, you'll, you know, you'll have left your job, started a business, and you have your own radio show. I just <laughs> laughed at them and be like, nah, you've got me mixed up with someone else, mate. There's no way, but it's yeah. funny how quickly things yeah. can yeah. kind of change as you, you know. It, it, it is, it is, it's like can change in a, in a moment, can't it? Mm. Literally, life can, but. Yeah. yeah. So I think, yeah, I, I think about managing the time. It's like I've got those, I've like the radio show, I rock up once a week. Now we've done it quite a few times. We've kind of got quite used to just being, it's quite informal. There's not yeah. a lot of planning yeah. beforehand. It's like what we're talking about today. And then we've got that kind of, we know each other and we've got that kind of conversation. If we haven't got a guest, we can fill a show quite easily just having a conversation, kind of yeah. like me and you are now, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's that kind of thing. So it doesn't take a huge amount of time. Although we are currently, and it's quite exciting, we are like sort of getting to take it to the next level now yeah, because a few changes with the show. Um, we're going out at a different time. Um, so it's going to be at 6 o'clock on a Wednesday. Prime uh, time. Going forward, which is sort of, yeah, great. Prime time, people. drive Middle time. Middle of the week, yeah. drive time. Like it's, it's, so we're doing that. We're, um, we're going to have it live streamed so people who are at home can mm -hmm. go on the website and watch us live. Um, so that's really cool. We're like in the process of moving to a new studio. Yeah. And I've also got my wife, Amy, uh, has come on board to kind of be like the creative producer for the show. Oh, so wow. she's doing all the socials. Which So we were doing this kind of rock up, record it. Hopefully people listen to it. It's available online. I might do a little LinkedIn post, but there wasn't yeah. really that, that energy and that excitement behind yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So like we've now got like a, an Instagram page yeah. that people can check mm -hmm. out. If I can just plug that. It's, yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll put links into yeah, it. Yeah, so well. like yeah, at yeah. Reality Check Community, um, yeah. we've just started this new LinkedIn page and it's all just silly stuff. Basically, it's my wife, Amy, for, for following me around and going, go and climb on that or go and do <laughs> this. Or And I don't even know Some why at the time, but she's got there, that, yeah. you know, like that mindset of being like, like the vision to be able to go I can make a funny post out of this yeah yeah, yeah. so it's quite fun it's not too you know we don't take ourselves seriously yeah, yeah. but um, yeah. the con the topics that we talk about and what we do on the show is quite serious but yeah. everything that sits around it you know yeah, it's a bit yeah. of fun as well and it's quite relaxed you've it, been on the show so I have yeah and, and yeah. we got pretty deep didn't we yeah, when, yeah, when, did, when we yeah. go on there and I know you you guys have invited me back again so yeah, definitely. super excited to to come and give you an update on, on that front but yeah it sounds like you know you, you you've had a completely different turn of events in life doesn't it going mm. from you know stuck in that kind of corporate nine to five grind trying to achieve society's version of success yeah to go and actually that's not that's not what i really want no and i'm here and i'm and this is how i run my business this is how i do my radio show and like we touched on i mean how do you manage the time and with business buzz i mean that's free things right mm. Yeah, but again, I suppose business buzz. It's kind of I kind of look at it as like it's like a day a month. Yeah. So yeah. and I try and do that all in one day. So I have yeah. it's one month. It's an event that's on the third Wednesday of every month at the yeah. Fox and Hounds in Kingsthorpe. It's sort of yeah. relaxed, informal networking. Um, it's two hours from yeah. ten till twelve. So for me, that's like that's the event. Yeah. And then around that, 
it needs to be promoted and yeah. uh, you know i set up an event i invite people to it i do some posts yeah um and follow up and do my follow-ups like yeah. you would any networking event so i kind of try and do that on that wednesday so i'll yeah. have the wednesday there then I'll stay at the venue and just get all of that prep, set it, up, for the prep next it for the next month right, set up right, the yeah. posts um and 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 yeah and that kind of then just runs itself in a way yeah. and the other thing with buzz is it's it's kind of um i don't know how you describe it really it's an organization that yeah, yeah. is almost like a franchise in a way you kind of yeah. take the license for the town for the so area I've got the license of. for northampton yeah and um you know if you get enough people in the room it pays a little bit but i don't really do it for the money it kind of yeah, yeah. it's it's not it's not going to overtake my day-to-day -day business sure it, unless sure. i had tons of people in the room and then from my point of view i don't mm -hmm. think that actually is what it wants because you can only speak to so many people in two <laughs> hours and if you've got it, 60 right? 80 100 people yeah, in a room yeah. it gets loud and it's you yeah. know it's it, it loses something i'd much rather yeah. keep it um smaller but more controlled in a way you know and, and and so that people are Absolutely. getting quality out of it this is it it's, it's the value isn't it yeah. what are you going to get you're going to go and you're going to get value and, you, and equally you're going to go and give value mm. um to other people there i mean on the radio show i mean what's your most kind of memorable moments that you've had where you've just been like oh, man, that's hit me hard or yeah quite a few times actually yeah. we've had some amazing guests on and we try and the show just to give a bit of context around the show it's around sort of mindfulness self-help and we yeah. focus on trying to get people to tell their story but also to recognize that a lot of the feelings and things that we go through in life we can control through the way in which we can't necessarily control what happens to us but we can control how we respond to those things and yeah. the mechanisms and techniques that we can use to be able to and sometimes it's as simple as being like don't deal with it right now this thing's happening to me right now yeah. i can either fight it or flight it you know i can yeah. either mm -hmm. go in mm -hmm now in this emo emotionally charged state which yeah. is probably not the best thing to do or you can just run away from it ignore it which is also probably not the best thing to do yeah but there's other options that we talk about like you can freeze you can stop for a moment step back yeah. remove the emotion take some breaths try some yeah. breathing try and focus in on like what what is this and how do i really feel about this and who am i as a person and how do i respond to this so it's all yeah that kind of that kind of thing and we really just want to give people a voice and and help coach people to be the best version of themselves that they can be because it goes back to what i was sort of touching on earlier about the programming we're all kind of told that no you do this you get your job and you're nine to five <laughs> yeah. and you or, or whatever you whatever taxes. hours you work you know <laughs> yeah. um, to yeah. pay your bills and yeah. probably unless unless you're really doing something special you probably only have just enough to survive and then it's oh let's do it's that again every year and you're kind of <laughs> stuck in it aren't you and it, yeah. and and it I think we get lost in that sometimes. You might have something that's yeah. really important to you or a dream or something that you're... So it's just about getting people to think about it, really. Think about what are the things in your life that you really you find yourself doing without even yeah. being asked or that really bring you joy. And is there a way that actually... Maybe that's what you're supposed to be doing. You know, yeah. Our job is... You know, we, we define ourselves by our jobs to some extent, I think, mm. where, you know, you sort of people say, oh, who are you and what, what do you do? And it's like, oh, I'm a re people even say things like, I, you know, once they've retired, oh, I'm a retired plumber. It's like yeah, you've yeah. retired, but you're still defining yourself by the career <laughs> that plumber. you chose. Yeah. But you're more than that as a, as a person. And there may be more <laughs> to it. It's super interesting. You just mentioned that. Uh, oh, I'm a retired. It doesn't really matter. No. No one cares. And also your job in society you. is actually to consume and buy things. It's yeah. not your job. What you do during the day is just to make the money, to buy the things, to keep the system going. Do you feel like that's what people like feel like they've lost purpose then sometimes if they retire and they are, they're self-identifying through what they did have? Yeah. And I see it. It's funny because you see different personality types that actually retire, and I've seen it many years over the years. Yeah. And I've seen some of, and and we kind of, you could almost have a sweepstake on some of them. Like <laughs> there was one guy who was, uh, it was like an external supplier for the company <laughs> I used to work for, and he was like, he loved it what he did, and he he was he was well past retirement age, but he was still coming in, and he used to train people on basically the back office system we used to use for insurance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he knew how to, he knew everything about it, and wow. we used to call him like the Oracle because he just knew everything about <laughs> the system. And um, passionate, he was like, I'm yeah. retired. In, I'm going to go and get an allotment and this and do this and I, and we were all just like he'll be back yeah. in six months he'll be back there's no way because he was so knowledgeable and he had that I think he loved the personality of it as well you yeah. know meeting with people and the social aspect and I'm like I cannot see that man on his own solitary <laughs> tending to the vegetable and he was he was back in six, like less than a year anyway it, he was, it's probably gave him purpose 
that's the thing, isn't it? Something so if you can replace day. the purpose that you get from your employment yeah. in the things that you do outside of that, mm-hmm. then 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 that's totally different, you know. But but I think people, particularly if you do a full on yeah. job that almost defines you as a person, it's yeah. really hard to detach from that, especially if you've o- done that most of maybe. your life. Yeah, absolutely um, impossible. Yeah. Um, I just want to switch things over quickly, just to um. The landlord stuff. I mean, we've, yeah. we've done quite a lot of work together. Yeah, yeah. Um, what what sort of challenges are you seeing for landlords when it comes to insurance? I mean, it's because it's it's never straightforward with a lot of them, is it? No. Well, I mean, it depends on yeah how how the risk is structured in a way. Yeah. The straightforward one, which I can get a quote all day without any yeah. referral, is always. You've got a house, it's yeah. not got any historical issues like subsidence or mm. big claims. It's not in a flood zone and that type of thing. Yeah. Your tenants are working professional, not benefit assisted. And that that essentially, that kind of structure yeah. is quite simple, straightforward, and you'll get a decent rate on it. And yeah. you can do that through a broker and I'll find the right insurer yeah. for you. Or you can probably do that online, direct yourself if you know what you're doing. Yeah. Just be, I'd always just say be mindful. A lot of people don't realize, I think, the difference between advised and non-advised sales. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. you know, you go on a website and tap it in yourself. Yeah. Um, you don't have that kind of protection of a broker that learns your demands and needs and makes a recommendation for you Uh, but you obviously pay a little bit more for that but you've got the peace of mind of knowing yeah you touched on there and this is like it's just kind of struck a chord in my head because we see it all the time Mm. when we're looking about um dss yeah asylum seekers yeah so that's where it gets more interesting more complex and that's where why is that just give us the kind of insurance take on it so it's (laughs) it's a bit of a con it can be a bit controversial yeah be careful how we word this but historically it's always come from the place of people that if you've got somebody who you almost want somebody who's taking a tenancy yeah that is treating the house as if their it's their own house so whether they grail, own it right? or whether yeah. they're a tenant you know they've they're looking after it they're yeah. doing home improvements they're keeping everything yeah. all the maintenance up to date and that sort yeah. of thing because when the maintenance slips or the kind of the way in which the risk is being managed, i.e. the person living in it and how they behave, can have an impact on the claim. You know, if you're a little bit, t- you know, less careful with certain things, you might be more likely to cause a fire. If you haven't had your electrics tested for multiple years, it's more yeah. likely to be an electrical fire, the boiler, all of those type of things. So it's probably, it, it's, it's, I think when you flip it to like your asylum seekers, perhaps are like people that are from, um, elsewhere they're not familiar with this environment they're not familiar with how we live or there might be differences there there might be language issues yeah, there might yeah. be anything it, it kind of comes down to it just being and there's more likely to perhaps less care on the property and it can be it sounds <laughs> sounds sad. harsh i'm not saying that yeah. because i don't think it's from a point of view of that person's from over there so they don't have the same values yeah, yeah. it's more just it's much it, Again, I have to take this back to with insurance. It's all based on statistics. Yeah, it's yeah. Accurists sit there and they crunch through the data and they come out with, we see more claims for this type of tenant from than we do seekers. for this type of tenant. Let's yeah. remove the emotion and all of the... Fact. There's no, it's, speaking it's, of facts. Speaking yeah. of fact, and, it, and it's difficult because like something you mentioned earlier, you know, people are very sensitive yeah, yeah. and those type of things can can have a problem you go well actually no you should treat them the same but it's like but if there's a statistical basis behind it it's like we're not saying it, we're not saying it's everybody it's but fact here's the fact and at the end of the day the insurance an insurer like any business they're there to make money they look at it and they charge a rate commensurate to the risk and if the yeah. risk is higher because of x y or z then you pay more for that yeah. and that's why we ask the questions at the front it's the same thing as i personally don't agree with something that happened for about 10 years ago now oh yeah they made a change in the insurance industry where they ge- they neutralized pricing gender neutral pricing it was around 2013 yeah. 2014 gender neutral huh? so historically if you're a man and you get car insurance you would pay more than our female counterparts right <laughs> and the reason for that was the same thing yeah. we just talked about statistics yeah. I'd, i don't like because i pay more because yeah, yeah. Uh, but i accept as an insurance man that more men have accidents than women because yeah. and and you can get into that as much as you want i think ultimately it's because we drive a bit faster more aggressively whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. i don't know why that is but that but but again it's, taking again, the emotion out fact. of it 
that's yeah. what it supports, you know. And and I suppose if you take it back, and then young people as well, young people so pay more. Young boys, seventeen to young twenty-four. Young boys, seventeen to twenty-four. And insurance. the thing is, you can yeah. say, oh well, we're all we're all, all the same risk, but but we're not because even if uh, I think back to my teenage years, and I'm not saying me, but I had friends who were driving and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. I can think of a few you know, male friends that would maybe be doing donuts in McDonald's car park. Can't think of any women. Eating donuts in McDonald's car park? Hey? Eating donuts in McDonald's car park. Eating or, yeah, you, know, whatever, you know, whatever, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. E- eating donuts. Eating donuts, yeah. In the so, car. yeah. But I can't think of any women that would out like, like doing that no. sort of thing. That they don't no, get as many. Absolutely you know, not. There no. are girl racers, but they're not. So it's all that. It's statistical, but yeah. they, they, they made all the pricing for that. And I think life insurance as well, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all that type. Which again, Life insurance. If 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 mm-hmm. if one gender lives longer generally than the other, which it's they do, factually based. then the insurer is going to have to pay more money. So it's <laughs> it's I don't it's more risk. It's more risk. So it's just yeah. it's 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 about. So I I personally don't agree with that decision, but they brought that in yeah. ten years ago anyway. And I think actually, if you look at it from a statistical point of view, the <laughs> argument should be: Can we not? look at it and get the risk down for male drivers what can we do to control the risk not just oh Mm. everyone should pay the same because i'll tell you what happened in that it's not like women's insurance got like it's not like men insurance got cheaper and it all balanced out is it what happened was women then paid the same as men (laughs) yeah so (laughs) it wasn't like we all lost out as consumers anyway (laughs) i've got a question for you and, and it's just kind of come into my head there and it might rattle a few people but what if people identify as another gender? Who do they go down on? On the ins- how does it affect the insurance, or does it, or does it not? Well, I suppose it doesn't now because it's been because ten years ago it was. It, yeah. It's no longer a characteristic that affects the pricing of the product. So, it, so it's it, not going to. So if you if you're on a you know nowadays on a form, you can ask somebody gender or right. say male or female prefer not to say so it's <laughs> like so say. so you can't it's no longer a rate like a no characteristic <laughs> in that respect yeah. is it it's so now more focused on your actual driving history wh- wh- what accidents you've had convictions that type so of there's thing. no hack for you know switching your gender you to can't get, switch your gender just to save money on insurance <laughs> no no there's not that i'm aware of anyway um and that might be the wrong well, you could reason. have 10 years ago maybe <laughs> perhaps and maybe that's why they felt the change was needed <laughs> love um, that. Who love knows? but we, ha- have, yeah, to we have to ask. progress don't we have to but yeah have you um had any real life scenarios where you've actually seen that this the insurance has made a significant difference to a landlord like something's happened they've had to claim i mean give us some examples because everyone's think oh insurance got to pay you know blah 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 but i'm really good nothing's going to happen you must have seen loads yeah of course yeah i mean the big ones is what i mean water's the new fire in insurance it has been (laughs) for a few years so back in the day fire was always the big risk and i think a lot of technology and things have, have, have allowed to reduce that risk in many times yeah. you know, fire suppression systems are way more sophisticated than they used to be yeah. um so all of that sort of stuff is that's helped to bring the fire rate down we know what type of material and, and materials are changing all the time so yeah. the ones that we know go up and burn you do pay through the roof for and it's very difficult <laughs> to get insurance for timber frame construction for example is a massive problem in the industry to get a mortgage fire. for as well. yeah for the yeah. Well, so, yeah. same reason um yeah. so you've, you've got all that but water is because Coming more and more of a problem um yeah. flood wise we're still building on flood plains where we've we've got you know various issues with um flood mapping insurers are becoming more and more sophisticated flood mapping software yeah. there's the problem with you know we had all the floods a fair few years ago now yeah um, i remember those and we actually. had the government yeah. come out at the time because the insurance industry quite rightly was saying this keeps happening we can't yeah. keep funding this yeah, yeah, so yeah. from a commercial point of view there's large swathes of the country where we're not willing to provide flood cover yeah so they start like uh it's called flood re and it's kind of like a fund whereby everybody's insurance pays into a, a little bit of everyone's insurance pays into yeah. a pot for it's those that, that live risk, in areas yeah. where you can't get flood cover co- commercially. Yeah. Um, yeah. So then you can, you're able to buy some form of cover from <laughs> this fund. Yeah. The government kind of did that in association with insurers, but it was under the agreement that the government would do all of the flood defense works that they talked about that they would do over the coming yeah. years. But the problem is that obviously <laughs> with the kind of short term cycles, four year <laughs> cycles of government, those yeah. massive projects <laughs> often don't, yeah. happen yeah. and then when it happens again the insurance the insurance industry go well this time we're not yeah, paying yeah. for it you know it's, yeah. it's so it, it gets difficult like that and then the other thing is you've got like um so water ingress is another big one that we see a lot of claims for 
storm wind driven yeah. rain going through into properties and causes a lot of damage we're seeing excesses increase now on yeah, yeah. it's quite standard now to see you know historically you'd always have you you usually um either zero or a, a 250 excess yeah on sort of your catastrophe perils fire lightning earthquake mm-hmm. aircraft explosion that type of thing um or, or nil excess on those and then you'd have standard excess maybe 250 for everything else and that would include water mm-hmm. whereas now we're seeing a lot of the time you're looking at a, a escape of water uh, yeah. and oil excess is maybe 500 yeah. subsidence thousand or higher if it's a particularly high okay. subsidence area so i've still i mean i'm dealing with a claim at the moment for a client where they've had a significant amount of damage they just had so much water it was a st- kind of storm initially but it overloaded the drains which created local flooding and then it oh, came yeah. in, took a wall down on the property. And the water came into the property and flooded the whole of the downstairs. Wow. From like, that's the speed the water was overwhelmed in the drains and then was running so fast it, it, it took, it compromised. It came in like that. Yeah. And Ooh. we're looking at big, big number on that, you know, and that's just a. Uh, wow. And that was for. Um, uh student accommodation so it was uh, <laughs> yeah. students so. no it was the timing on although it happened kind of a f- few months ago so it's in that process of being dealt with now and the only sort of saving grace on that was actually a big part of the period where they were doing the remedial work was in between um the term time oh, okay so, so it's they, like cause, you know yeah, kind yeah. of end in june july and then come back in september so it was kind of they were between okay tenants anyway but uh, okay but yeah but it was still it's it's quite a it's yeah, in, it's so we see a lot like that I was um, just, I was just thinking there when you're talking about that, the perils, acts of God. What's, what is that? Well, acts it's of, not really. Why, why acts of God? What is it's it? not really. I think it's more of an American term to be acts honest, because they're kind of very, yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you know, even when you go through the courts, it's they're, it's still very linked with religion. Isn't acts it? I think of God. Swear yeah. on the Bible or whatever. I don't know <laughs> yeah. if they still do that, but yeah. you see it in all the movies, don't you? Yeah. Um, but yeah, we don't really. I think it's it. We don't tend to use that phrasing in this country so much because. Yeah, yeah because it's the but i suppose the 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 idea of it is it's it's the big things that you can't control if someone breaks into your premises and steals all your stuff it's not really an act of god or a <laughs> or a you know it's act it's, of the devil it's like yeah somebody <laughs> wanted your things and they were able to compromise your security and get them you know it's, crackheads burglary. it happened yeah <laughs> so it's but i suppose if you're yeah, like your what we I I refer to as catastrophe perils. Basically, they're they're, they're low. What we would call like low frequency, high severity. You know, it it, yeah. it doesn't happen very often, but when it does, yeah. it's almost certainly a massive claim. Yeah. Um, yeah. But again, those sorts of things, the ratings are fairly standardised because insurance has been around for a long time. Yeah. They've got a lot of data to go off. They know and it's factually based. It's all factually based and yeah, scientific approach to underwriting risk, which is what yeah. insurance, which is what sits behind insurance at the end of the day. And this is it, isn't it? It's all it's all risk. And I guess what we're saying is sometimes it you can't calculate for that risk. It's unexpected no. and it happens and, and we deal with it. I like, think for me, that's yeah. how, what, the, if I wanted to get one thing across about insurance to people to start thinking about and understand it, it's, it's really about, you've got a risk uh, or what we call an exposure. Your, ex, yeah. your risk exposure is you've yeah. got all of these things. Some of them are theft attractive. Some of them aren't, you know, you've got yeah. all of your covers that you need. Um, and then sitting around that is the insurer will, take on that risk from you in exchange for the premium yeah they'll usually have a few conditions that you need to follow because Mm -hmm. they'll have established ways in which you can mitigate is the word your risk to an extent you can never eliminate can you it's mitigate so can have what sorry you could never really truly eliminate is that why we're using the word no so so yeah you can't you i mean it depends on what it is but essentially if your your responsibility as a policyholder and that'll be written into your policy is to mitigate your risk as much as you can. Yep. So that's to get around the idea of saying like, Oh, I don't need to worry because I'm insured. Well, that isn't how insurance works. <laughs> you know, it's about, it's, it's there to protect you when everything else fails. It's like, you've done everything you could to stop it from happening, yep. but it still happened. The yep. loss is still as an insurance term, we'd describe as fortuitous. It's still, it, it happened through no fault of you know we tried everything and it still happened you're yeah. you're indemnified for that you're insured despite for our that, best efforts despite our best efforts so yeah. an example of mitigating your risk would be i've got i want theft cover i'll lock my door each day and the insurer says ah but the amount of equipment you've got there we would also need you to complement that with an alarm mm-hmm. so you'll need to have an alarm installed in the premises and you'll need to make sure that you set that every night 
and they'll have an alarm warranty that says if you don't set the alarm and you're burgled and they take everything then you're yeah. not covered so yeah. that's you mitigating your risk for the insurer you've yeah. locked the door you've set the alarm but if they still get in and get everything then you're insured for that yeah now there are risks where even mitigation is not enough you know the insurer says look even if you did absolutely everything we still can't insure this yeah. and there's certain industries that are like that where yeah. it's very difficult to get good insurance cover because there's good and bad like there is in any industry and yeah. what type you know call it like the paper it's written on but it's essentially um the credit worthiness of the insurer because yeah. a lot of people don't think about this but especially at a higher level uh, larger insurance risk it's important that your insurer is financially viable <laughs> if you're spending lots and lots of money and you can't have insurance companies do yeah. go bust you know yeah, yeah. If they have a massive claim or a run of claims you know they'll Absolutely, and that's why we talk about five star de facto rating. Yeah, and we have um, yeah. same, similar thing in insurance. Yeah. We have a few different rating houses. We got like um, yeah. AM Best, Standard and Poor's, and they'll have either and they have different rating structures. But yeah. you want to ensure it's like A rated, A plus, A minus. Um, just, just a thought. You know, um, people often say, you know, and you've touched on it here. You know, insurance. You know, it's they're just there to make money. It's not worth the paper it's written. Yeah, on. I hear that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, it pays out right i think the difficult thing it's an odd product isn't it because it's done ta- it's non-tangible it's, you, you know you can't touch it you can't feel it you're not particularly it it's it's a very strange purchase because most things that we buy and again we're going back to that i, I would argue that perhaps sometimes you don't get the enjoyment out of it that you might think you would it, it with yeah. materialistic thing oh i want the latest thing yeah, yeah, and you yeah. get a little rush of chemicals when yeah, you buy it, and then, it, and, then yeah. it, and then it goes away and then you want the next best thing which is sure. the lie the new iphone that's, that's the thing <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're chasing yeah. happiness yeah. that you won't find and sure. uh, you know i've listened to loads of people talk about this really interesting one stephen bartlett's book happy sexy millionaire yeah, he covers yeah. it really yeah. well he goes and in, you know he's talking about billions Billionaires and millionaires, yeah, and yeah. even they ask them when when will enough be enough? You know, people are going to afford literally anything. <laughs> They're like, oh, I need, you know, I'm getting another six foot larger boat yacht, yeah. and then I'll be happy. And they yeah. won't. They're lying to themselves. And, and this this is it. And it's, um, and I think it all really, you know, in summary, it really links in with kind of the direction you've gone on the radio show, doesn't mm. it? You know, kind of that balance of. You know, we can get really in depth on insurance, yeah. and then you've got the mindfulness and and you know keeping in check with reality. Yeah, um, it's kind of about bringing it back to simplicity, isn't it? Really, because absolutely. And, and you and Nigel always talk about paying it forward. Mm. Um, and I think you know people listening, they could absolutely learn a lot from you. Um, I certainly always am learning from you when we meet up, mm. and I think you you know a real pleasure to be around. For our listeners, before we go. Where can they where can they find more about you? Where can they connect with you? I know you mentioned a little bit earlier, but where 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 can they get more information if they if they want to pick things up? Yeah, sure. So I mean, I'm kind of I've moved away from a number of the social media platforms personally now. Yeah. Um, but from uh, I've got I had to retain a couple anyway just to keep the business going. So yeah. The yeah. main one, to be honest, for me is LinkedIn. So yep. I'm, I'm I've still got a profile on LinkedIn and pretty easy to find can, on there. We can stick that up. Yeah. Um, so we can stick that up. But um, yeah, I'm quite easy to find on there. Just search Glenn Thomason Glad Insurance. Yeah. Um. I've also got a uh, Glad Insurance Instagram account, which yeah. is uh, at Glad Insurance. Some good reels on there. Uh, some good reels on there. Yeah. And then, obviously, <laughs> the reality check one that I mentioned earlier as well. Which is um, the other Instagram. Yeah. We can put um, a link in for And that. other than that, it's, you know, just do a search online. I've got a website, Glad Insurance We're not Solutions. We're not going to find anything we don't want to find? Not like. anymore. I've deleted it all within the last <laughs> few weeks. Yeah, just in <laughs> anticipation of coming on this podcast. So I know it, you know, I'm once just... it goes out there, everybody's going to be searching me. So I'm I'd... just thinking of another story you told me recently about your time at Costa Coffee but oh, we'll, yeah. we'll leave that we'll, leave we'll, that for we'll, end, we'll end the show on a high um, honestly thank you so much mate for coming along today I really appreciate no, thank you. it I appreciate it you've given me so much more value and touched on things that you know we're, yeah, I've always got a lot of time for you so thank yeah, you so much appreciate it no thanks Adam cheers mate thank you yeah. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the Alpha Chats podcast series we really appreciate you watching if you're enjoying please subscribe we're trying to get up to a thousand subscribers by the end of this year which means that the more subscribers we get the bigger reach we have the bigger the better guests that we can get on thanks guys